Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit. He signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's basically all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1,000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's just more. Cool. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Alrighty, people. <clears throat> it looks like we are live and in the house. I've bought myself some uh, new equipment today to try and increase the, uh, the uh, um, frames per second. So hopefully when I'm transitioning between screens, uh, it should record better and should improve your viewing experience. You know, got to uh, upgrade the show now and again. So let's do this. Rock and roll. Here we go. Straight into the statistics, the crypto weather forecast, the health of the network, the system checkup. Here we go. Uh, Binance again, still macking it hard on Bitcoin because they want it because I am now convinced following their behavior that they are trying to accumulate as much as they can in order to relist it because they are, I think they figured out they have made a huge mistake you know all these shit corners are going bitcoin won't be around bitcoin can't last they have no idea um some very interesting things gone on here so even though uh, cardano <laughs> well uh, bitcoin jumped above cardano and then cardano jumped above that P complete and utter manipulation like Cardano has got literally no fundamental value whatsoever. I would say it's just nefarious forces who uh, are able to print whatever they can, just literally trying to suppress Bitcoin because they don't understand it. They don't understand that it is a commodity. All these shit coins have got no value whatsoever. And that's what these utter morons just simply don't seem to understand. Uh, but, you know, uh, smartest people in the room. And uh, this is, as they say, Darwinian theory played out. So yeah, let's just have a quick look at this. I mean, this has been a huge increase, uh, you know, all of a sudden from um, well, 170 up to like 176 and then there've been more incremental increases as well. I mean, look at this over the week. So it's up 20% this week, but I mean, look at that. One, two, three, three huge uh, you know, incremental uh, increases uh, pretty much within 24 hours of each other. So that to me suggests it's a single entity doing this. And when they do it, they're shaking out the weak hands and they do it again, shake out some more weak hands. Seem not so weak that time, you know, uh, just to pump it a little bit here. I, I'm again, just open to speculation, but you know, eventually someone with a lot of money, a lot of money 
is going to realize and the penny is going to drop uh, and this thing is just simply going to go ballistic um, you know no it's going to be a someone that's got a lot of respect um, because in order to have figured out what we already know obviously it took me a bit of time so it's going to take somebody else even more time especially when these <laughs> multi-millionaires get their research teams on it and even they can't figure out you know um, it's yeah I mean I've managed to do it absolutely categorically, fundamentally work it out. Um, but if I can do it, someone else can, you know, but just might take them a while. But, you know, if, if you're smart, you want to get in there um, and do something like this, where you literally sort of like don't pump and dump the price. You want to pump it a little bit as you're buying it because you're buying a substantial amount. Let the traders go down a bit, you know, just so that you're not actually buying all the way up and then you lose it in price. This is the way you want to do it. In fact, my goodness me, yeah. I think this might be a big player because if uh, if I was a bit of a douchebag, I uh, you know you'd just simply go in, wouldn't you? Uh, but then the price would go up. Traders would be acting like piranhas again, take the price back down again. Whereas if you're going in like this big, uh, you've got all these shaky hand, weak hands thinking, all right, it's it's uh, it's a pump, it's nothing, and then they go in again, and then they go in again. This is how I would do it if I had a lot of money. And I suddenly realized that Bitcoin was BSV and I wanted to get in. This is exactly how I would do it. Well, I'd probably go OTC first. Um, that's if there was any OTC trading available. Um, I think the amount of BSV available is very small because people are not willing to trade it. Uh, not at all. Uh, and talking about that, let's just have a quick look at the, uh, let's have a quick look at the trade, uh, trade volume. Here we go. So, um, 24 hour trade volume, so that's the amount of, <clears throat> basically the amount of Bitcoin that's available for selling in comparison to the uh, the overall market cap. So uh, so we've got um, a $3.2 billion market cap and 127 uh, million uh, traded in the, in 24 hours and comparable that to Bcrash, I mean look at that, Bcrash is 4.2 <clears throat> and 24 hour trade volume is, uh, is 263. So, uh, I mean, that's literally almost double what, uh, uh, what, what Bitcoin is. Um, and yet the market cap is only, uh, what, 25% more. So you've, you've basically got um, a 50% increase in trading volume between Bcrash and Bitcoin, and yet only a 25% difference in the overall market cap. Um, so that suggests to me that there's just not many people trading it which means that yeah, there aren't that many available, which means suddenly when everybody wants some, there isn't that many to go around. The price is going to absolutely rock it. Absolutely rock it. So yeah, um, fascinating times. That's what I'm saying. You know, I've, I've, I was going all in with everything. Uh, yeah, even now, well, yeah, when times are like this and the price has gone up a little bit, it's just like, well, I'm still buying. You don't really have a choice. Uh, you know, price goes up, price goes down. You just have to take your chance when you can. When you, you know, thank your lucky stars, you're still buying it for. Uh, um, is this in? Uh, still buying it for 172 dollars. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely nuts. It's, uh, you know, you can buy Bitcoin for 172 dollars. You know, I mean, that is absolutely mental. Uh, when I first got into Bitcoin, obviously, you know, before all the forks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was already um, 500, uh, I think it was $500, $500. Yeah, and then um, I think by the time I was able to make my first purchase, after I'd, you know, read over and over, trying to understand wallets. Oh, well, yeah, there's paper wallets, and there's soft wallets, and there's hard wallets, and there's fixed wallets, and all this crap. And I was like, look, can't I just have a wallet? Because I haven't got a clue, you know, about my my um <laughs> my attitude to risk at the time i just didn't know what was what the yeah, else is like look i just need to buy this thing and put it somewhere and then obviously you know came across coinbase yeah check check this out check this out so i mean yeah i know i've just gone over this but i mean this is a steady increase uh this doesn't this looks like something or someone who doesn't want a pump and dump so in other words they don't want to get in um, and then just simply have the value that they put in crash out. So they've like, incremented it, put in, oh, gone down a bit, nice one, now we go in again, oh, gone down a bit, now we go in, shake out all the weak hands. Um, I, I think this is genuine investment. I, um, I, I really, I don't think this is a trader. 
it doesn't look like a trader. It looks like a big investor um, to me. Again, just my opinion, purely speculation, but um, that's what that's what I would do if I had uh, millions of dollars. <laughs> but I don't, so I haven't. So uh, Larry Clerkman had said here, so uh, I did some accounting of the Qcoin hack based on the wallets, um, very likely associated, and based on my estimation. There was nearly 280 million of assets stolen, not 150 million. <laughs> uh, quite a substantial difference there. Good grief. Um, this would make it the third largest hack in history and seven, time la seven times larger than the Binance hack last year. Whoa. I mean, honestly, what? Well, so now I know um, I've got, I've seen Rogerverse portfolio, I've seen Chico Crypto's uh, portfolio, um, that Martini guy's portfolio, and, uh, and now we've got uh, Tim Draper revealing uh, his portfolio. You know, and it just goes to show you, these people know absolutely nothing. Let's just see what uh, he says here on um, eSports. So this was, uh, I mean, at least eSports News let him uh, write an article for them. So uh, eSports and the advantages of massively scaled blockchain. On that note, it's time to ding a dong and let's uh, leave, this, uh, leave this picture up there. So pay mails and handles um, uh, in this Twitch chat box, please, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do this. Rock and roll. So <laughs> uh, on that note, thanks for joining in. And uh, as ever, be aware, take care, stay safe out there. Joy given, same time tomorrow. Catch you guys later. Buy BSV Live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and watch the full episode on Streamanity, free for 15 hours. Go to www.sertoshi.tv. See the link in the description below.